quite an interesting scene we have here in the Gospel of Luke of receiving both a command from Jesus and healing from Jesus just by the command. He doesn't lay hands on them. He doesn't say be cleansed. He just says go show yourselves to the priest. And so they go and they're cleansed on their way. And the ones who are observant Jews, they feel like they have to go and complete, look, I'm going to go show myself to the priest, that kind of a thing. And only the Samaritan realizes, hey, I've been healed. And this guy's the one who healed me, so I'm going to go back and give thanks. In other words, they could have stopped, all ten of them, stopped, gone back to Jesus, given thanks, and then gone and shown themselves to the priests. But it was a bit of kind of that just do something for me mentality. Not a relationship. The Lord is calling us into this relationship of thanksgiving that He saves us and calls us to give thanks. It's the very name of this very banquet that we have today. Eucharist. Thanksgiving. People say, oh, you know, whether Christians celebrate Thanksgiving, we should every day. Eucharist. To say thank you in Greek today, you say, evkaristosi. Which is basically, I Eucharist you. And this is what we see too in terms of what thanksgiving means. When we are grateful for what God has done for us, it changes our lives. And it causes us to act different. We see that in the, in the lives of St. Nicholas, Tavlich and Companions. Um, a, a few friars... Um, who were martyred in Jerusalem. Nicholas Tavlich himself had spent 12 years preaching in Bosnia to kind of bring the Christians there back to a unity with the Catholic faith. And then he goes with some other, and meets some other friars in Jerusalem, and they study Arabic because they want the Muslims that are there in Jerusalem To come to faith in Jesus Christ. They they long for them to know the same Savior that they know. And St. Francis of course commended his friars. That when you go amongst those who do not believe in, in Jesus. That first you go and you just live among them. And you make friends with them. So they were living there for a few years. Serving at the holy places in Jerusalem. Living on Mount Zion. The friar in Mount Zion. Which is actually outside of the city of Jerusalem. Um, It's not the Temple Mount. And then one day they decide that once they have prepared themselves linguistically with with arguments both from Christian scriptures and the... And to argue against the Quran, they go and they present themselves to basically the head honcho, the Qadi of Jerusalem, to try to convert him. Maybe not the smartest move. That was basically inviting martyrdom. But it also asks of us a question when we see the lives of saints like this. Are we willing to allow what Jesus does for us to completely and totally change the way we think. So much so that we would do something like go and preach to people we know are going to kill us for preaching the gospel. Will we let it transform our lives? Or will we continue to try to do our will the way those other nine lepers did? Just going about doing their own business Instead of stopping, entering into relationship. 
allowing their, their even, even the, the quote-unquote religious thing to do to be interrupted because of the relationship. It's an interesting question for us today. We ask the Lord to give us that grace that, that we not get into status quo thinking with Him. That we each and every single day appreciate the great gift that He has given to us. And that we enter into this Thanksgiving sacrifice with hearts that are filled with gratitude. Filled with gratitude because Jesus has died for us and he gives us himself in order that we might have life. That we might have our sins forgiven. That we might know that our God is our savior. That he doesn't want to count our sins against us. He wants us to be not condemned but convicted so that we'll say yes this is what I did and I'm sorry for it. And that trusting God we will know that he forgives and breathes new life into us in ways that we could never imagine, including breathing into us the power of the Holy Spirit. So we ask Jesus today, and we ask St. Nicholas and, and companions to pray for us today, that we may be filled with that kind of gratitude, that kind of relationship with the Lord, so that we don't just go about our business, but Truly, truly live a life of gratitude.